before you lot start on me, I am aware that my jumper, uh, pull over, pull over if you're older like me, jumper if you're sort of medium, if you're young and trendy, merch. Anyway, I, I, am, I am aware that it's creased, okay? I'm just saying I'm aware, but it, it's clean. I'm minty fresh, it is clean, but um, I didn't iron it. I had an accident, actually, there you go. You can actually see the mark there. I had an accident with an iron. I ironed my hand accidentally whilst trying to iron a pleated dress, not mine, by the way. I only like pleated skirts. So uh, yeah, anyway, me and the iron, we've fallen out, no more. Anyway, what I thought we'd talk about today is the sort of desperate situation that we've got going on with the transfers at the moment and why this is the perfect time to unleash the scouting department. Whatever David Moyes has been doing behind the scenes, Whatever he's got Rob Newman doing, now it's time to reveal what it is. You know, like they say, you know, saving up for a rainy day and, uh, and basically when it buckets down, you still, you still don't spend. I think the rainy day is now. now that, that right back nobody's ever heard of from Brazil or, or whatever the case may be, that, that striker in League Two in France who, who's got potential but might become a good player, now's the time to get them in. Because quite frankly, we're struggling. Not just that, yesterday I did a video and I mentioned that Wolves were basically plundering us. It's, it's, a, it's an act of football piracy. Actually, that's a different subject. Uh, there, there, there is there's pilferage going on, let's put it that way. Since then, it turns out that Wolves now also want Mikel Antonio. You know what they're doing? They're doing a Newcastle, aren't they? You know what Newcastle did to Burnley last season? Which was, they went and took Chris Wood. So, obviously, Newcastle had to sort of take care of their own uh, results and performances. And, and they hired a new manager and whatnot. However, if there's a really good way of ensuring that you avoid relegation... It's by pilfering your relegation rivals. And that's what's going on. A pilfering and a plundering is exactly what's happening now. Well, they're trying anyway. So basically, well, basically Wolves are Newcastle with Burnley, if you hadn't got that. And uh, well, look, I mean, whether or not you think the Mikel Antonio... I was going to say the Mikel Antonio deal. It makes it sound like it's probably got more credit than it deserves. But I'd be interested to know, actually, your comments. Um... What do you think? What do you think? Let me let me know in the comments below. Do you think that we should sell Mikel Antonio? Um, I would suggest no. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not suddenly backtracking on everything I said about Mikel Antonio, by the way. I do think he's going to really find it hard to rekindle the form of two years ago. I actually think that the contract that Mikel Antonio was on was perfect. Do you remember the one he just renegotiated? Uh, I think had he have stayed on the original con contract, it would have been seventy thousand pound a year, and it would have finished at the end of this season. I think that was about right, actually. I'm not saying he shouldn't have stayed, but I think maybe he gets to the end of the season, and you know, you, you might renegotiate as a squad player. But he he signed the contract, the four year contract or whatever it was, a hundred grand a week. Um, yeah, I I, I don't think we need to needed to do that anyway. So. Irrespective of all of that, whether you think he'll rekindle that form, I think even if he's worth one additional goal to Wolves, then it ain't worth doing. You do not want to strengthen your rivals. They're already trying to take Dawson off our hands. And by the way, that story has, has moved on a little bit. And, and, and I don't want to say too much about it because, you know, clearly there's clearly there's something going on. And, and to, to pry too much, we'll be getting into a man's private business, his family business, and, um, you know, it's, it's nothing to do with us, certainly. Uh, but I, I think, you know, I think it's quite clear that he probably needs to be uh, at home at the moment. As, as I mentioned before, I don't know if there's a resolution that can't be worked out in the interim where he may, maybe misses a couple of days a week training and, and stays up, uh, you know, where he lives and sort of tra work, trains from home or something like that. I don't know. I don't know the situation. But anyway, it appears that Wolves are after Dawson. Um, he's desperate to... It's not even, I don't think he's desperate to go to Wolves, per se. He's, he's desperate to be to be up in the north of England, as we've already discussed. Uh, they're going to take Aaron Wambasaka, who, was, who we wanted. Uh, they're, look, they're looking... They're, they're actually... They're, off, they're going to get um, the lad from Bristol City, who's... Oh, something Scott. Good player. Really, really good. Really good player. Good, uh, talented youngster. They've got money to spend, by the way. It looks, it looks they got 
like they've got 20, 30 million pounds to spend this upcoming transfer window. They're serious. Basically, Wolves are a club of ambition. Wolves are saying, we don't want to be involved in all this. We're, we're going to, basically, we're going to pilfer and plunder our rivals and we're going to spend our way out of it. You know, good for them. Good for them. I, I look at Wolves and I see serious intent to not be in the shake-up and the mix-up at the end of the season, basically. So, you know what, fair enough. Um, for us, uh, and sorry, sorry, just to go back on Mikel Antonio, um, I think even one additional goal, it's not worth doing. I sort of caught between a rock and a hard place with it, because I, I don't think Mikel Antonio should be our main striker. Not only not our main striker, I feel we'd need somebody a little bit more prolific for if Skamaka you know, doesn't work out or whatever gets injured or whatever, or we can't get the best out of him. I think it's really important if Skamaka's having a bad game that we've got someone to come off the bench who's who's prolific, who's, who's a threat. And Tokyo just doesn't look a threat. Doesn't It's not threatening the goal at the moment, is my point. But that being said, I still don't think you give a rival a leg up. Okay, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Um, but this is no better opportunity for right now, right now, for us to start bringing in these players that clearly we've been scouting for some time. When I say scouting for some time, when David Moyes came back into the job for the second time, he replaced, if you remember, um, Pellegrini. Now, P Pellegrini had been managing, but also had his best mate, Husselos, was director of football. And apparently, uh, the, the story goes, how much truth is in it, I don't know, but the story goes... That when they were given their marching orders, given their P45, they, they took, they literally took the dossiers with them. They were paper based. And uh, so rather than us employing these people and paying them a load of money, they got paid a load of money, Huslos and Pellegrini, and actually taking um, and collating a database of all the players that they'd scouted. No, we basically we let them scribble it on the back of a fag packet, a um, bit of crayon on post it notes. And then when they went, they said, right, we're going to take all of that research with us. So apparently David Moyes walked into the job and it was old Mother Hubbard's cupboard. It was completely bare. Literally, there wasn't a single scouted player. And it, I was going to say there wasn't a single scout. There was one scout, do you remember? So he had to revamp the scouting system. And he's been doing that. We've, we've employed numerous scouts, actually. We've got a scouting system now. Uh, there's now a director of recruitment, or whatever you want to call Rob Newman. we got scouting systems setting up in Brazil and little, little offshoots of the academy here, there and everywhere to look and try and well, try and pinch the, the best, the best, not just young talent, but unearthed talent. You know, talent that, you know, maybe flourishing, doing well in the lower leagues overseas. You bring him in. Diafra Sacco, someone like that would be, if you remember, a good player. Well, and I know things didn't work out at the end, but he was a good player. Players like that, you know. Now's the time. Because, look, Ennestri, we're seeing something, a familiar pattern here, aren't we? He wants Ennestri, chases Ennestri, Ennestri doesn't want to come. Uh, we, you know, I mean, it's, it's got a, a little whiff of the Jesse Lingards about it, that particular one. But this is a consistent theme. It's not like we never sign any players, but this does also happen. Seems to be for every player we sign, we sort of chase one, um, irrespective of whether they want to join us or not. Uh, the other one's Wambasaka. We've heard about this. He's been chasing Wambasaka for the best part of six months. You certainly, um, you know, laying the foundations, laying the plans to bring him in in this window, even though we couldn't get him in the previous one, to such an extent that he's been almost willing to let Vladimir Sufal go. Not only let Vladimir Sufal go, but Vladimir Sufal has spoken publicly about he doesn't feel wanted and, and he knows basically knows he's up for sale and whatnot. Now, Sufal's contract is up at the end of the season. If realistically Moyes saw him as a long-term plan at right back, he would, he would offer him a new contract. He hasn't done so. So I think Moyes' plan all along is to be bringing a right back. He's number one choice, Aaron Wambasaka. We know he didn't get the midfielder he wanted because it was after Anana. I think playing Paqueta in midfield is an afterthought. I think you've seen that because he's only really just started doing it. Really, isn't he? So clearly there's some positions there in terms of striker, in terms of right back, um, in terms of midfield and the Cornet thing. I'm, I'm stalling on the Cornet videos, you can probably tell, just because I want to sort of know what's happening before I, I say anything. I feel a little bit guilty because I sort of did the whole where's Wally thing and where's Cornet. Um, and it turns out, he, he look, he's got, it he seems he has quite a rare calf injury, which apparently a specialist has only seen it twice in the last 25 years. Uh, however, I, I 
you know, he's got a bit of a reputation. We were told when he signed from Burnley that he's never fit and um, and he can, uh, he's unavailable for um, quite minor ailments, put it that way. So anyway, I, I don't want to say too much more. I feel I've already sort of taken the mickey out of the situation. I didn't really know that he had a serious injury. Uh, so I'll wait and see on that one. But my point is he probably needs, David Moyes probably needs a left winger, right winger, sort of a versatile attacking player. There's places to be filled now. This is the time for the for the scouting system to produce. There's no point waiting anymore. You know, David Moyes' job hangs in the balance. And I, I know, I, I'm aware, every time I say that, I am aware, you know, there'll be people in, in the in the chat, in the comments, and you know, your comments are, are always are always welcome, you know. Um and then you'll all you you know, a lot of you say, no, he's staying, regardless he's staying. So I know a lot of you think that. I don't. I find it hard to believe. I can't think that they that someone's allowed to lose game after game after game after game. You can't go six, seven games in the Premier League without winning and expect to keep your job. Well, not when you've spent 180 million. Not at a club like West Ham where you've moved to a... We're just trying to get the stadium expanded to 66, 67,000 seats. You can probably do it at Bournemouth and keep your job, but you can't do it at West Ham, right? So with that in mind, I think he's not got an indefinite period of time at the club. Uh, he's, he's got to sort it out, basically. He doesn't have the luxury of waiting until, I don't know, t another two years for the scouting system to come good. At least come good now. Right now, like this week. Uh, for David Moyes, he needs it this week, I'm pretty sure. At the worst, next week. We show a bit of promise against Wolves. We may get the Everton game. Crap against Wolves, crap against Everton. He, he's gone. I, I'm telling you, he is gone. So I'm telling you. There's no in the know. I don't have any insider information on that. I suspect he's gone. <laughs> it's no, there's no waiting, no waiting around for to people to scout some more because he may well find that exactly everything that he's built in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the scouting network, in terms of the whatever, the director of recruitment. Everything he's built for the long term, he doesn't go to get to see see the fruits of, taste the fruits of, something to do with fruit. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. The scouting system is the tree, and he's planted the tree, and the tree's grown, and it's just starting to bear fruit, and he won't get to munch the plums, if you, if you know what I mean. <laughs>